Welcome everybody to the Friday Life class. Please let me know as always that you can hear me and see me correctly right here to my left. And if we are all good and ready to get started, dude, it's going to be a very exciting day because that weekend it's coming ahead and we are going to get ready to tackle that beautiful Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you're in crypto, and if you're in stocks or in any other market like Forex, let me know. We're also going to be taking a look at what you could be expecting on the upcoming week and also for you to pre be prepared on the uh, opening market times. So guys, let's get started. First of all, remember that today is the follow-up day of yesterday's advanced class. If you are new or beginner, don't worry, shoot your questions, we're here to answer them all. And today, also, I would love to do some asset hunting. So if you're looking that shiny stock, that maybe shiny Forex pair, also that brand new uh, cryptocurrency, let me know right here so we can take a look at those and maybe we can take advantage of what made the weekend come and also the Monday will also be coming. So what is up? New yearly uh, high on BDC today at 39K. Yes, yes. Guys, by the way, if you haven't uh, watched that video, go take a look at the Piper Academy video. We talked about the, the Bitcoin dominance and also Piper had a beautiful table. Uh, sorry, a beautiful chart, not table. That, that my bad. Beautiful uh, chart that uh, was talking about probably a very nice uh, December for Bitcoin. So what is it? Pyth USD? Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at that one. Have been trading in this week. It's the first link uh, competition comp uh, competitor. Yeah, it's new. Sure, let's take a look at that. So let's get started with what we left out yesterday. But but I would love to take a look at Ethereum. So what is happening here? So, first of all, you can see that I have a couple of uh, free tools in here. So, let me uh, get rid of those and go over what we're here for, which is, what is it? Our chart prime indicators. So, let me double click here. By the way, guys, I have outdated uh, versions. So, if you have the latest one, those are the best ones. I just haven't had the time to update a specific chart. Don't worry. Uh, most of the uh, functionality is there, but the math behind it has been fine tuned it and so if you have the ne the newest one you're gonna have much better results or more or better fine-tuned results so what we got here we are having a breakthrough a triangle here all right this is a symmetrical triangle it's breaking to the upside remember it is not about the breakout guys what is it about let me know on the side chat it is about the retest. Yes, it is about the retest. Hey, Rishi, what is up, brother? And welcome back to the class. What's up? Always a great pleasure to have you here. Yes, it is about the retest. So what do we need to wait for or look for on a retest characteristics? Usually we go for, yes, it's not about the breakout. It's about the retest, but we also want to see what? We want to see flip of the review. Hey, buddy, uh, Army Piper, I sent you the link if you want to join. Uh, we have your um your place here as always. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, I see. I see. Perfect. Whenever you are off, uh, you want to jump in, just uh, ping me and um, just basically I'll change off my screen to give you uh your little box right. Oh, right here next to me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Basically, we are getting started, Rigi. Nice to have you back. So and safe travel there, Piper. So it is not about the breakout. It's about the retest. But we are looking for certain characteristics of that retest. So we're usually looking for that FOR, flip of the ribbon, on support. So do we have support? Yes, we do have support. So remember yesterday, uh, we were talking about, or somebody was asking, like, you know what? This is mooning. So it has a breakthrough. Should I open a fast and quick trade just to grab some, uh, some um, profits there? Well, then that depends on if you're willing to lose that trade, maybe get stopped out or uh, something like that. But remember, the most important, it is always retest. It is always confluence. It is always finding that base or about that support or that re resistance with that confluence. So what I uh, would do, because I haven't opened a trade in this one, just so you know, it's waited for that beautiful retest. Did we have that beautiful retest? Yes, we did. And then we went back above that target. The price right now, it's very close as where we should have entered. 
So if you don't have stop loss, it's time for you to add a stop loss. This is not financial advice. This is only what I would be doing in your place. So you feel free, feel free to do whatever you like. So at this point, let's see if that is going to be moving up or down. So far, we are on a resistance zone. How can I say that? Well, then you can also see that previously we have had that fake up. What I'm expecting, look at that consolidation score, it's pretty high. So I could be looking at a, a fast change of, of, um, of facing here. So, or broke through that consolidation. So what I'm expecting actually, it's a little bit, couple of candles more, maybe ranging until I get a eight or a nine. And then I start looking to see what is my oscillator could be doing. Let me remove everything that I have here. And let me redraw those uh, baselines that I had. So this is the first one that I have here. And this is the second one. Let's just add this one from here on. Yeah, those look pretty nice there. So what I'm looking for, it's maybe a retracement here because it is retracing and going for what is this, guys? What can I call this? This is a cluster. It is a what cluster? Guys, let me know. <laughs> Love that face. What's up? Hey, uh, salute the hammer. Hey, what's up? All good here. Great, great. So, hammer, there you go. Everybody knows you, but your name, nickname. So, well earned there, buddy. Love it. So, overbought cluster. Uh, something like that, Nate. Very close, very close, guys. And by the way, if you're new, you don't know the, the answer. Don't worry, just give it a shot in here because you're earning points as you type and as you participate and then you can be changing or exchanging those points. And by the way, guys, yesterday we were talking about how to know your level. It is um, rank, by the way. So it's like that. Oh, it's like that and do rank on the chat. So once you do that, you're going to have your rank and know how much or how many points you are earning there all right just so you know so let me see here Yo. perfect perfect oh <laughs> look at that now it's working right now it's from finally working that's cool that's you love it look at that 142 rank level 38 oh number one look at that Rigi. what's up with that dude oh my god look at that Rigi. number one killing it Rigi. you know what we call him the hammer look at that number one level 38 we have here uh, number 421, number uh, level 3. Don't worry. Yeah, it is madness. It is madness. So, brother, Rigi, I salute you, brother. Respect, respect, respect. Yes. <laughs> Guys, so let's take a look at what we got here. And also, let's wrap this one up so we can go do some hunting. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm neither do I. I'm not. I, I'm not surprised either. <laughs> it's it's Rigi, right? I mean, the next one, I bet it's uh, it's magician or deep magician, most likely. So let's take a look at here or Kaf, Kabif. Maybe it's Kabif. So yeah. So are we looking for that retest? Yes, we are, and we're looking also for that fully above the ribbon. If we can do that flip of the ribbon, we will be having something that I know as a double top cluster, right? And that double top cluster, it is not about the price chart. It is about what am I seeing on the oscillator. Let's take a look at what happens on that double top cluster when we had it. So first top right here and second top right here. Look at that beautiful difference. So we can see that we have a beautiful continuation of that movement, which is a 8 point eight points of difference, eight percentage of difference. So we need to be aware of that. How could we know? Well, then we can go maybe to a lower time frames and look for what is it happening there. So we have a much more uh, defined entry here. So I, I already have what uh, overbought golden box and a triangle of reversal. I'm also flipping down. If I break back inside that triangle, most likely scenario, I am going to go hit that big support. Let's take a look at our support resistances. Well, then everything is down there. That's fine. Let's take a look at what else. Order blocks. Again, guys, this is the old version of order blocks. Your version, it's much more advanced. Stick with that. All right, stick with that. So where do we have our order blocks? My order blocks are all the way up here next to my premium zone. So what could I be ex uh, expecting? Maybe that further movement to the upside 
to the same zone that I see the previous uh, section there. And I have two options. Right now, I could be making a double top and then going back, that, back down for that next retest. And at that way, I'll be making that double top, then going back down. And then on that flip of the river would happen there or happen down here. That's when I could be looking for re-entering on that scenario. There's another scenario, guys, which is a complete breakthrough. In that case, in that case, now I'm looking at a big candle breaking through. I need to have some spacing here, maybe one, two candles, but the candle that breaks through needs to come up top of this uh, of this uh, order block. It needs to completely drain that order block, all right? So for me to go have the chance to make a retest on what next will be a breaker block. And then when I see again the flip of the ribbon on that breaker block, I could be looking for that next movement to the upside, all right? So, so far, it's not about the breakout, it's about the retest, and you did not cause that retest, that's fine, because we are going down at this moment. We can take a look at, for example, something new in here. I'm gonna be, um, let's remove this oscillator and add the newer one, because it's time for me to start updating stuff. So, let's do, uh, what is it, Prime Oscillator Pro. Let me click that, and I got it here. This is gonna be a quick overview on how I configure my own oscillator, right? Bear with me because I'm going to be moving fast, fast, fast. Click the gear icon here. Uh, I've got to be configuring the Prime Oscillator. I'm going to be skipping this up here. I do want the bounce. I do not like the dots. I do like divergences. These two divergences, which are hidden divergences, I'm only going to be uh, decreasing the, the transpar or increasing the transparency so I don't see them. I'm going to click away and then wait for that little right to stop moving, and now they're gone. I'm also going to be doing something else on style. Scrolling all the way down, I have my zero line. Uh, I'm going to be increasing the full opacity here, making it a little thicker, make sure that it's a straight line, and that's it, a continuous line, sorry. Then for bullish control, I'm going to be adding uh, green, and then leave it as is, and one important thing that I like is going to be doing a negative 95 so I can see that line popping up all the way here. Let me show you. You see now how it's popping up here. And I'm going to be doing almost the same thing on that bearish. Click in red, leave it as is. But in this case, I'm going to be doing positive 95. And you will see how that line drops somewhere around here. So let me click away. And there you go. We can see it there. So that is my main configuration. Let me save this so I can have it for the next upcoming movements. And then... On my inputs, now I can go ahead and change my oscillator. At this moment, I want to take a look at my trend fusion oscillator and click here. Right, I want to click OK. Why? Because I want to see what's happening with that money flow. Remember that right now we have two different calculations for that money flow. The first money flow, the one that I like the most, it is this blue one. The next money flow, that is not that I don't like, it's just that I'm just used to using this blue money flow, it is the green money flow. So, and then what do I have here? This is green because this is the trend of the oscillator. This is the trend. So, what's happening that with that trend? What's happening with that trend? It is that we are almost all the way up there. We need to be careful because when we are up there, I mean, we still have that little itty bitty movement uh, that we can still prolong in here, but we're getting very, very, very close to being what? Over what? Here we go. So, and when we get there, most probable scenario is that we're going to be flipping back down. One more thing here, guys. The money flow, it is flat right now. It is flat. So, we have a uh, equilibrium between that money. We, it is not either uh, going out or going in as much like to one side to, compared to the other one. So basically, we should be looking at a ranging scenario. But be careful because that flat zone doesn't last too much. And then we have that uh, either money going in or going out. Guys, so with that money flow uh, being flat, I want to see maybe that pull up and then retracement. So far, that's what I'm saying. So guys... Firefly, fly, what's up? What is the blue versus the green money flow? They are the same thing. They are money flow, 
but the data behind uh, or how is that money flow calculated, it's different. So they both are measuring the speed and on how that uh, money is rushing in and rushing out, but the data with their, uh, they're being fed is different. So you have two different perspectives of that same money flow. So could you give me just one second here? So does that answer your question? Uh, there we said, who asked that question? Did I skip you? Here we go. Firefly. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Anytime, brother. Uh, what are the dots uh, that show up in on a diamond shape? Those are reversals. So this one's right. Reversals. Those reversals are when we have a overextension of uh, the, the trend. All right. So when we're getting overextended, we're going to be seeing that kind of off. Uh, reversal. So we get started with blue, then green, and finally on the other, sorry, blue and then green at the bottom, right? And then at the top we have purple, yellow, and we should also have, yeah, the diamonds there. So the purple is kind of like the first warning. The next highest warning is red. The same thing happens here. So blue for the first warning and then green for the last and most powerful warning. So does that answer your question? How are the perspective, uh, perspective different planes OC for money flow. Like for example, uh, when, let me give you an example. When you, and let me add this, this is going to be much more clear. So let me add in here, uh, let's do, let's change here. Let me save this and let's close everything in here and let's change to our uh, latest indicator. So it is a strategy. Here we go. At this point, I'm going to be adding a predictive tool. Why? Because a predictive tool, it's very sensitive on how the data is read and displayed. So for that, let me turn everything off in here. And the only thing that I want to be turned on are the predictive ranges. I'm going to be turning them on here, predictive ranges. Here we go. And that will be it. So what am I on Ethereum? Look at how is Ethereum looking here. And then I'm going to change from Ethereum I'm on Ethereum versus Tether and Binance. Let's do ETH and then let's do, I don't know, whatever else, US dollar on Bitstamp. Let me add it. Let's find it and show it. So let's take a look at this difference. So let's see that we have a purple line in here at 2148. Where is the other one? The other one on Ethereum should be here and look at that we have not a a purple line we have a gray line so as you can see we're processing the same algorithm but with different data uh seat which means that we are getting this data from ethereum binance over the the tether uh pair and then we're getting the other one this ethereum from Ethereum, I can say US dollar itself, but from Bitstamp. So slight difference of data give you, yes, a similar result because we can see the resistance here, which is the important part, but slightly different precision based on the source. So the source gave us the information, we process it uh, based on an algorithm, and then we output the calculations. So as you can see, this is kind of like the butterfly effect, right? So slight difference of data gets accumulated and they build up to give you a somehow a different result. The important part is that since they are both money flow, they should be both getting in sync with each, with each other. Slightly different, which maybe one might be faster to tell you or indicate you a reversal. And then in other situations, the other one will be faster to give you that reversal. Why? Because we're looking at different data sets from different providers. So does that make sense there, Rigi? Let me know. Trader Smart, uh, how can we uh, uh, customize alerts through Webhook? That is a question for the developers. I don't customize alerts uh, through Webhooks, but in what I do instead is that take a third-party um, provider, set my alerts, and then create a bot, but that's the way I learn it. As far as, uh, as uh, manipulating that webhook, you will need to go to help section, uh, do add support or add uh, developers, and ask the question there. They will gladly guide you. Don't worry, 
Uh, also, I can't uh, basically go ask the, the developers. And once we get that, I can give you the heads up. But remember, since that depends on your, I mean, I'm a little bit familiar with that since the webhooks depend on how you're going to be using them. That is very, very, very specific of your case scenario. So most of the things you're going to be finding them on the platform that you're looking to push that JSON code or the webhook, uh, yeah, the, the web uh, hook uh, code into that platform and look in that a tutorial on how to do it properly. Because depending on what you're going to be processing that data, the, how you uh, place that, that alarm set is going to be different. But in our in our suite, how do you configure your alerts? Let me show you that because I do have a qu uh, an answer for that. Like for example, let's say that you want you are on your Market Dynamics Pro here. Let's click down here and then scroll all the way down. You're going to have an alert customization here. And yes, Altero Local, I used to use that one. Uh, but not anymore. It's just too much maintenance. And for me, it's just taking away time that I could be looking for best entries instead of giving maintenance to a bot where I can just set up straight alerts and trade it myself, right? So, I mean, that ended to be, for me, my own case. Uh, that ended to be a little bit uh, of more work, less uh, retribution for that work. But that that's me. I mean, for you, my work awesomely right so at this point you're gonna add for example the kind of alerts that you want i just added some randomly bear in mind that because you select them all at once it is not gonna make one single uh, alert when all of them are together no no it's gonna give you a one alert every single time a swing fill uh upside happens it's gonna give you again one single alert once every time they confirm head and shoulder pattern appear. And then also it's going to give you a separate one single alert every time that um, we are having a touching support on OB. So overbought basically uh, going like that. Uh, Market Dynamics Pro. Yep. So that will be how it works. So it's not collectively. It is individually in a cluster. Does that make sense? Then you're going to be adding here your code. It could be JSON, it could be related to your webhook or anything that you want it to be sending. So remember, this is part of TradingView. So TradingView will be pushing that code as a message. You need a way to read it. And then you're going to be clicking OK. And then adding the alarm will be as straight up as going in through three dots. Add the alarm. Make sure your any alert function is created or is selected. And then you confirm that the alerts you set are being here with the function call. Function call. And then you just create it and that's it. Remember that this alert are not multi-time frame. They are only created on the time frame that you created the alert. So I'm going to click cancel because I didn't even realize what I clicked. It was only an example. Let me know if that answered your question. Please uh, go over the prime tuning score and consolidation. Thanks. Prime tuning, uh, RICI. Uh, I'm going to do a quick overview because today we are we promised to go over uh, hunting. That is a basic question, which is fine. But you can find that on the pre-recorded classes that I made, uh, video number three. Uh, I'm going to make sure that they those videos are uploaded and up to date today. Nonetheless, you can also come in and look for that same video on the live class on Monday. But I'm going to be answering to that question very, very quick. First of all, your uh, prime score number, which is going to be your optimal tuning here, it's going to be the mathematical most accurate uh, points that you can have. But that's for a computer base. What we do is that we take a look at our dynamic reactor here, and then we add our tuning, what, 29, we add it up here. And then we turn off auto maximizer. And then we start rising our tuning until we have a strong or a bearing uh, matching uh, flag as we break above. And then a matching flag as we break below. Matching flag as we break above. Matching flag as we break below. So we're going to be having, I mean, we're always going to have some sort of interference. You can still rise in that, um, that tuning 
and also find your sweet spot on that tuning based on that methodology. So that is how I came up with my tuning. Once I already have my best tuning, I don't longer need my optimal tuning because I already modified it. As you can see, my own settings are 43. If you are just here copying it, you're doing it wrong. You need to go over this process on your time frame and on your main asset. So then the next one, prime score is basically how bullish or how bearish we are. Guys, veterans, help me out here. We have an insanely high prime score. Does that mean we're going to be longing there? Let me know. Perfect. Then where do we long? Exactly. Look at that. Reach a classic. Hell no. Yeah, where do we long then if we if we have a, a high prime score? On retest, yes, exactly, on retest. <laughs> I love it, Rich, I love it, brother. Yes, T-Bone, yes, on support, on support. Aaron, what's up, of the reactor? Oops, yeah, oh, also, look at that, of the reactor, at retest, at support, right? So, also, at leap of the river. So, we, remember, we are looking for that confluence. FOR, Jeff, love it, yes, FOR. What does FOR means, guys? For guys, for the new members, let's uh, let's uh, give him a heads up there. Four, <laughs> exactly. We are uh, long at four, right? FOR, love it. Flip of the ribbon, exactly. At FOR, four flip of the ribbon. Perfect, perfect. Love you guys. I so love you guys. So, yeah. So that is what we do when we have a prime score. But like for example. Uh, let's go to, let me just scroll here and let's click here. It just happens for me to click on Stellar, Stellar, uh, this, and uh, Stellar, what is it? Sorry, Binance, again, Stellar. And then I'm just going to be waiting for that. And I can say we're bullish. That's it. Let's go to the next one. Wave, maybe. Uh, what is it? Are we bullish or bearish? Well, then, uh, let's see. Ah, bullish again, bullish. Then if I have a couple of assets, I can very quickly see whether I'm bullish or bearish. So then, what is my consolidation score? Consolidation score is telling me how likely am I into a consolidation range, right? So into a range. And also, it's telling me how likable am I to be at the end of that range. The prime score goes from 1 to 10. And I'm going back to prime score because this is important. 1 or 5, 4, and 6. What does that mean on my prime score? Little fish, where are you, brother? Oh, I do. By the way, little fish, I did not tell you at the beginning. So, shout out to you, little fish. Great to have you here. Veterans, veterans. I do tell you guys. So, it is I I S H. So, if you can change, see what we're talking about. So, is this case, uh, which one will you personally prioritize? Let me see. Let's go on that uh, open image in new tab. Let's pull it up here so we can see it all. Or in this case, you're asking me, what will I prioritize? Are we talking about money flow? Well, they both are showing the same thing. Yeah, they both are showing the same thing. Let me show you. Like, look at this money flow. Yes, it's going down, but it's kind of like a reversing. All right. And this one is already has reversed. Right. And look at that. This, uh, the, the, the moment, sorry, the trend itself is already changing. So at this case, right now, I don't need to prioritize one over to another. Why? Because my trend, it's already changed and I see this one going up. So what it's telling me, it is that I am having that flow in. And on my other, on my other money flow, it is always a little bit more elongated, all right? But as you can see, we are right there on usually a pivot point, in a pivot point, and we see it bleeping or being flat. <laughs> so yeah, in this case, the red one, change it faster in this specific scenario. But remember, I'm using Confluence. So the, oh, I see now this arrows. Got it. Sorry for that. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Or I see it in this case. Well, then if I see this, I will cancel them each other. Why? Because yes, I have a, a picking here. But if I take a look at, for example, this and this and this and that, they both could be canceling each other out. And I haven't seen the chart, but I almost can bet that we were either ranging or getting ready to break the range. Perfect. Yeah. Send it, send it over and we'll see. We'll see what happened. Not only because of that, because look at what's happening with the trend. So I have counteracting money flow. They cancel each other. And then also the trend, it's struggling to break through. Well, then at 
this point where I see the trend changing, and then at this point, look at how fast the blue one went down and back up. So this section right here is the synchronizing phase, which was telling me, you know what? They did cancel each other, and then the blue one, well, then got new data, changed their phase, synchronized it with the red one, and gave you the heads up there. You can see the blue one is changing much, much rapidly. So uh, let me know if that answered your question, but it's not that prioritizing one over the other one, although you could. And in this case, since I'm seeing a very volatile money flow on the blue one, I would be looking at the red one or the green one a little bit more. Hey, Sol, what's up, brother? What's up? So that will be my answer for that. Uh, in this case, coming back to this one, because we need to go over a couple of coins uh, or assets. Uh, four, five, and six on my prime score, that means that I'm neutral. Because one, two, and three, one, two, and three, if I have chance, this is berries. Uh, seven, eight, and nine, and of course, ten. This is bullish for me. Thank you for that, Richie, and thank you for your question, by the way. And this is giving me neutral zones, all right? The same thing happened for the consolidation. We go from one, two, and three, very low consolidation, so we're not there yet. And look at that. Let's see. Uh, let me open that, open image in new tab. Let's scroll it here. And exactly, look at that, we were ranging. We were ranging, right? So I told you, I mean, I was almost, I must, I'm a, I was almost positive that we were ranging because the money flow on that point, they, it canceled each other out. And also the trend on the trend oscillator, on the prime oscillator, uh, it was flat. Yep. So nice, look at that. And thank you so much for your question, by the way. No, read you the hammer. Oh, we need to fix that. I haven't fixed that. Uh, for some reason, the bot is just uh, not letting those those thing. Uh, what is it? The, the animated gift go through. I'll, I'll fix that. Promise to get it fixed by the next class. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It, it's it's just a bug that that for some reason it just happened. Let me just go over the bot and and you know, fix that bug. But promise that I'll, I'll fix that. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. No, you're not gonna get kicked back. Well, maybe we kick back the bot, <laughs> but you you won't. Don't worry, you can you can push as many as you want and you will you will not get banned. Promise. So moving to consolidation score. Remember, one, two, three, low consolidation. So most probably we could maybe have some sort of consolidation, but keep moving either up or down. So low consolidation, most likely to keep moving towards the, the trend is pointing out. Then four, five, and six, that will be a base con a consolidation, all right? we could be considering that we are strongly consolidated and looking for that range for us to enter at the bottom and again, enter at the top. So longing and shorting, longing and shorting, not finished advice. This is part of my own strategy for ranging. So, and then, oh, come on. And then seven, eight, and nine. That means that we are at the end most likely we sh could be breaking that range at any moment, right? And what are we seeing right now? A number nine, and we're seeing those absorption wicks trying to push up. So do you see how is that working? Prime score and consolidation, did I answer your question? Let me know. Perfect. Test, T-E-S, what's that mean? Oh, yes, got it, got it. <laughs> my bad, my bad. So guys, uh, we still had a little bit of time. Let me know what assets should will be going for hunt. All right, what are we gonna be putting into our aiming scenario? So we are ready for the weekend WFC. Absolutely, let's do WFC. Link, snap, and soul. Absolutely, let's do that. So link, let's start. Oh no, WFC. Sorry, my bad. WSC, here we go. Against what? What is it? Is it crypto or are we talking about uh, indexes here? WSC. Oh, perfect. WSC, well, right now the market should be open, right? But not for too long. So we might be heading into a gap in here. So let's get started for the very beginning. Are we bullish or are we bearish here in the four hour? And should we be longer there or not? Bullish, perfect. We're bullish. And we should not be ranging it right now. Perfect. Yes. So 
We're looking for retracements. Exactly, not longing. Retracements, support zones, resistances for that uh, bouncing scenario, all right? And also look at what's happening now with our oscillator. We are having, what is it about to happen here, guys? A four, right? Or a four, exactly. Overbought, also, yeah, overbought, also like that answer. Very nice, leap up the ribbon. Exactly, yes. So, so far is not a time to be longing right away. A Rigi, look at that, 1,281%. Oh my God, dude, guys, you see what we call in the hammer? Here we go. <laughs> so now it's time to refine this analysis. So we know we're bullish. We have a very nice prime score, consolidation score six. So look at that. Remember what I said, five, six, or seven should be what? Looking for the start of a consolidation. What has happened before when we are at the top? Do you see maybe consolidation zone happening there? Yeah, you're hammering the charts. You're forging the charts there. So, so now you can start seeing what I could be expecting here. But let's find a little bit more confluence because confluence, 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 guys, that is the name of the game. So where do I have resistances? Let's turn on my support resistance as well. It seems like this, but we are about to have that FOR, all right? We could be overextending a little bit more like this. Look at that, maybe uh, almost there, same zone, and going for an overextension on the previous zone. So now I'm shading some light on where I could be finding that retrace. So I am not chasing after prices. So despite I could be seeing this playing out, I will not be entering for that. Why? Because my entry point, it was either here when I uh, retest here or either here when I was in a very nice double bottom scenario, going up, taking TP number one, waiting for the retrace and then adding back to this one. So far, this is not it for me. This is not it for me. So if it goes to the moon, let it go to the moon. I don't care. I'm not winning. I'm not losing money. But best of all, I'm not losing money. So how many times you've been chasing after a price and then it just reverses on you? Let me know. So what am I going to be doing? It's maybe adding or not maybe definitely adding an alert there. Remember, that's a very important part. Adding an alert where you have crazy resistance. What else am I going to be looking for? A flip of the ribbon right there. I could be also looking at a double top cluster here. So this is happening. This is not a complete double top cluster because we don't have the overbought and the golden box and the reversal. Nonetheless, look at what has happened just like we learned before in here. First top and then second top. Where was that second top playing out? At the big resistance. Look at that. Even close, very close to the channel. Almost perfect. So again, first top. Where could I be having my reversal at the next stop? I will also be looking for MP signals and also be looking for that double top scenario. What else could I be doing here? Well then, first of all, let me add my lines because I don't want to lose on that one. So let me add two of those because I do have three resistances there. Pretty, pretty uh, strong. That's why I'm going to be adding two lines there. All right. And then also other li two lines in here and one more in here and uh, over exaggerated or forecasting my oscillator. That's it. Now off with the support resistance. I already have extracted everything that I need. I don't need it on my screen anymore. Let's add something else. I could be adding, for example, oh, my predictive ranges. Predictive ranges, I am breaking through that one and I haven't generated anything. So at this point, I'm on a waiting zone. And if I made it to break this, I'm going to be regenerating another one like in here in the most likely scenario will be where I go to hit it before a reversal. Well then, on this scenario, nothing there just yet. Let's take a look at the next one. We are breaking through that purple line. So if I make a restructuration, this is a pro tip guys. Look at what happened when I broke the purple line. What was the very next line that I went to hit? Well then, in this case, I came purple, but Usually, but usually we go to find that blue line. Let me show you that that repeats. This, in this case, we were breaking through the dynamic reactor. We had a strong one, so not about the breakout, it's about the retest. 
we did not make it through the golden line there, and then we finally break through. But most likely scenario, when we break the purple line, we hit immediately that blue line, breaking the purple scenario and almost immediately going for that blue line, breaking the purple scenario or purple line, immediately going for that blue line. You see how is this playing out over and over again? It is not 100% perfect, but guys, you let me know what is 100% in the markets, right? So pro tip guys, if we restructurate these lines, we most likely are going to go seeking the blue line. Again, you need to compare it with something else like your oscillators, bar resistances, and your money flow. Perfect, Jeff. Yeah. Nothing is 100%. Exactly. Nothing is 100%. That's why we always said have at least three points of contact, three points of confluence, three different uh, indicators to, to tell you the same story. So, love, lovely there. Only death and taxes. So, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful answer there. Love it. Love this answer. Yes. So only those things are 100% and I agree with you. So is it clear what are we expecting on WFC? If we go for the opposite scenario, we could be finding support at big confluence again. So remember, that's why, oh, that's why, and I haven't done it. I'm going to be adding both of my alerts. So let me remove this because my plan A is go ahead this one and reverse in here and then continuing to the upside. My second scenario, my plan B, will be going here, finding a retest and then moving up. So this is B and this is A. Remember, both plans for A, when I hit here, I need to do my analysis again. For B, when it hits here, I need to do my analysis again. Any questions on that? I like taking, oh, love those. Yeah, love those zones. Let me see why I don't have them here. I should. I absolutely should. What is it? Border blocks, bullet time frame blocks. Very valuable value liquidity. Here we go. Oh, no, those are liquidity zones. Oh, my bad, my bad. Oh, look at where are the liquidity. Oh, God. I don't see it. What is it? Where did I left them? Oh, here we go. My bad, my bad. A little blind at the moment. And adding confluence. And adding confluence, look at that. Couldn't be better there, guys. So, what is the next one that we promised to look? Let me look for those. So, it was WFC link. Let's take a look at the link. And by the way, Tesla Pilot, no, sorry, uh, Dame, uh, Damien, any questions? Let me know, please. Oh, yes, you, you mentioned that one first, Major Pain. You're right, so let's take a look at Peace. One hour, KuCoin, perfect. Let's take a look at that one. P Y D A. KuCoin. One hour because we don't have enough of information. Look at how weak information we have. It's just a brand new coin. Uh, let's see what we have there. So one hour. It seems that we have barely enough. You know what? Not, not even one hour could be it. Let's do 15 minutes. Oh, let's do a micro analysis on the 15 minutes. So far, it's going down. Uh, premium discounts are pretty close together. So we are below the zero line here until I see maybe a reversal and I start seeing that movement like I've seen here. You see that? How I start making those, not only bullish divergence, but that trend line that goes uh, climbing up. You see that? Order blocks. Yeah, let's take a look at those order blocks. Oh, support resistances. Oh, nice. Let me see where are my border blocks. Seems like I have a mess in here. And prime screener, prime screener. What do? Oh yeah, ah, that's it. Let me remove that one. Uh, let me add those on market dynamics here. Let me add it here. Order blocks. Nice. And by the way, great suggestion to add on order blocks. I also add order blocks. I did some sweet trades in range. In fact, that's what I go. I was going because let me make this big. Yes, we're bearish. And let me turn off my order blocks because I did want it to push it in here. Support resistances. And look at when I call higher linear or lower energy levels, I talk about these sections, usually going for a range, right? We do a range, we climb into another high energy level, and we tend to stick there for a while. Look at that high energy level. Then we go in down another high energy level, and then we go down. You see that? how it keeps playing out. Also remember, going down a little range, V-shaped recovery, high, not higher than previous range, that is what gives us, guys. What does that give us? That gives us a 
ranging scenario based on Wyckoff method, all right? So pretty nice there. The same thing the other way around, going up, layer range, V-shaped recovery, lower, not lower the previous range, that gave us a ranging scenario. Right now, we have broken this uh, energy level. We are below the dynamic reactor. So I believe that we are going to be uh, we're going to keep ranging between this zone. I mean, I did not underestimate the breakthrough this section, which I will be pushing me farther down. I believe that uh, if we break this, this line is only going to be a reaction line, and we're going to go farther down. Why? Because look at what has happened with that oscillator. Let me clear this up. Uh, make those pointing here, points in here, and... Also, another point in here. So, again, chart prime I 101 on oscillator. Where is most of the action happening on that part? Is it above or below the zero line? Well, thank you for that, Rigid. Love that. Love that commentary. Love that. Thank you. So, yeah, it is above. Above. So, what has happened overall on that price action? Yes, I know it's a range, but it's an up ranging zone. Yeah, in mode, in a range, because for me, that is a range. For me, I consider that a range, all right? Why? Because we're not breaking any higher energy levels. Let me show you what is not for me a range, because we do break energy levels. So, like that. And I compare that energy level to, like, for example, the electron uh, jumping to a higher energy level around the atom, atom and stuff like that, all right? So, uh, we see this energy level. Again, look at that beautiful movement, and look at that going down, little range, V-shaped recovery, high, not higher than the previous range. That gave us a, what? 70% chances of a range. What range am I looking at? So remember, I added here one line, and I add in here another line, and I see that my range should be this one. Yes, we had this fake cut, but so far, we've been playing out that range, Fairly nice. So, that is a higher energy level that I'm talking about. In this case, we are not breaking any. We are still within the same energy level. Breaking now the energy level, and what happened to my uh, oscillator? Where is most of the action happening there? Is it above or below? Yes, graphics. That is Wyckoff, the Wyckoff method. Love it. Nice. Yeah, I love Wyckoff. I love Wyckoff. So, that is below the zero line. That is below the zero line. So, What's happening there with the price, overall price movement, went down. Again, we broke above the zero line. What happened to the overall price action? Went up. We broke now down, and we're not able to break past it. That's what I was telling you guys. I need to see a higher high and a breakthrough, right? So I need for it to bounce in here and then break through before I consider a long. Does that make sense? Because so far, we are below the zero line. Perfect. Let's move into the next one. What is? What was it? Link? Was it Link? Let me know. And by the way, great suggestion there. A major pain. And let's get started with our prime screener. Shall, shall we? Let's turn it on. Let's divide it in three. First ones, we have, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Did I mess it up? Oh, come on, OC. <laughs> oh my God, making a fool of myself here on life. That's fine. We all do mistakes. So, 20. Even, even failing to count to 20. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, so, 20. If we divide it, we can have either, I don't know, four counts of five, right? Or what else could I be doing? I'm looking to get a, a somewhere around three. I, I was testing you, right? I was testing you guys just to see if you if you were tuned. The first ones, we're going to be adding them for crypto. So let's add the first, of course, is going to be BDC. And I want to look at it at Unest Coinbase. Let's add this one. So here we go. That's going to be BDC here. Then uh, what, what are we talking about here? So Pipe. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Let me get started on the fifth because in the first ones, I want to have a little bit more of that, those for sure blue chips. So, and I say that for sure because nothing is for sure. 
So let's do what is it? P Y T H P Y T H, and we were looking at add KuCoin. Also, let's take a look at Link. So Link, uh, what is it? What is it? Link. Here we go. Let's do United States Dollar and Coinbase. They're on Binance. Let's add this one. I like this one. Although Binance right now, guys, be careful of Binance. Be careful. Red alert there, right? Let's add that one. What else? Guys, give me your golden chip. Give me your blue chip. So, yes, let's take a look at Soul. So we have what? Link, Bitcoin. Let's do this here. Let's do Solana. Let's do Perpetual Contracts. Let's do this one. Uh, no, this one. Yeah. So we have Bitcoin, Solana, Link, and one, out, one more. GRT, Gala, Illuvium, and oh yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. I do like an ENJ. We've been looking at ENJ lately. Very nice coin. And Ethereum, AVAX. Guys, we have a ton. We need to go slow, but yes, yes, absolutely. We're gonna do, we could that, we're gonna tr try to do them. So one more and then we go to analyze those. So I think I'm gonna be including ENJ. So ENJ, and here we go. I have it here, engine. Perfect. And add it. Perfect. That's it. Uh, so far, so good. And at the bottom, we're going to do uh, WFC. So WFC, and it was this one. Perfect. So I think it's time to look at the next one that I promised. What was it? Let me see. Because we're already running out of time, so I need to blast through this coins in here. So where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? WSC link. Are we link? No, the word pipe. So let's take a look at link. And this is the one, right? Come on. Curious. Perfect. Link going for maybe a dead cat bounce. I don't know yet. We need to look for it. Let's wait for the indicators to load. All right. First questions first, guys. What is the first thing that I need to ask myself to start understanding my my indicators first of all i need to turn off every single thing what i need to understand here what is going to be my first question guys am i what jeff rid of your brother bullish or bearish perfect shout out for you jeff so uh guys let's answer jeff are we bullish or are we bearish we are bullish perfect yes we are bullish deep bone chief us yeah chip us yeah let under undertake yeah and nate Two, one, two. Nice. We are bullish. And we see those beautiful pullbacks that have been happening. So how can we know if it's going to be continuing or is it going to be making maybe a double top and maybe going for that sweet dynamic reactor down here? So let's start speculating on our oscillator. So overbought, what's happening here? Almost, almost, almost FOR. All right. I just need to make sure that I, this is not a fake out and keep uh, going down. Like I've seen in the past, like that, like I've seen in the past in here. Although if we see it ranging, look at what might happen. This is what I want to plan for, all right? But, but, very important. What happened here, guys? What, let me remove that spaghetti. What is in this? And that is because it is not about the breakout. Yeah, it is a high, it's a high volume. Absorption week, exactly. That was the answer I was looking for. But uh, Prodigy, you are right. I mean, that's what I was looking for. Oh, oh, for absorption week, the uh, the answer that you gave, high volume, that is completely correct. It's a correct shout out for you. And it isn't about the breakout. It is about the retest. There you go. Look at that magic retest there. So that's why we keep those uh, concepts there because look at that. They just, just something just happened so quickly. That if you were prepared with that retest, I mean, it is just magical what they when they uh, happen like that so fast. You enter and then from one second to another, you are on green numbers. Yeah. Now it seems like we are above the zero line, so we are overall bullish. All right, we haven't broken into the red cloudy here again. We are still fairly bullish. So let's get started with adding maybe some support and resistances. We are struggling here. So, I am looking at a polling here, and because I have one resistance, another resistance, and another support, for me, there are three possibilities in here. A bull flag, 
a triangle or a double dot. You see what I'm saying here? Let me know. And again, this is speculation. This is speculation so far because none of them has played out. Remember, a pattern. It's a pattern once it confirms their neckline broken or the pattern it's broken. That's when we say it was that pattern. So do you see what I'm seeing? Let me know. And also, give it a guess because this is also about speculation. Give it a guess. What do you think is going to play out? Double top, bull flag, or a triangle? Let me know. Go around. Hey, Major Payne, thank you so much for being here. See you and catch you on tomorrow on the coffee, on the morning coffee. And great Friday to you. Double top. There we go. Perfect. It's a double top for chain link. Let's take a look at something else in here, all right? So it seems like I'm running out. Rigi, continuation. Look at that. Rigi has spoken. Rigi, I think you, I, you cannot tell me otherwise, but I bet you've been in very nice, what is it? Like manufacturing plants with, with the magician. <laughs> You're, you've been stealing that crystal ball that he got going on there, right? You've been using his time machine. Guys, by the way, Deep Magician, the only time traveler here on Chart Prime. I have no proof of that, but also I have no doubts. Getting the absolutely <laughs> love you, brother. Love you, Rigi. Love you, Rigi. So you say continuation could be. It, in fact, that would have been a great opportunity to enter. Did I enter? No, too bad for me. So let's take a look at if we have something like a pattern. So let's do medium. I do have this and it is not playing any pattern. That's fine. I don't need it to be any pattern just now. So I just let it be. But what I want to see, it's going to be my predictive, I uh, mean predictive tools. I had a fake out going back up. Now I'm almost certain that I am going to visit the top of that uh, predictive range. Oh, sorry, does that, um, this is the evolution of predicting ranges. This is, sorry, the prime ranges. So just so you know. So yeah, it could, it could be it. So most likely at this point, look at that. It is playing out as we speak. That FOR bouncing from the red cloud going to get that beautiful uh, line there. Let's take a look at how far could it go. So let me add my predictive ranges with my order blocks and swing fail patterns. So far, my big order block, it's down here. This is magnetic. All right, so look at how thick it is and how magnetic could it get. So be careful because at this point, yes, I'm almost certain that we're going to be going up here, but I'm also very doubtful of this uh, order block not acting on that rejection zone because when we hit that golden line in here in that premium zone in that um, prime range, well, we kind of have some sort of reaction to the downside and having the magnet pulling on that, that could be dangerous. So what am I going to be looking for? FOR on the oscillator. FOR will define whether I enter for bull or bear. Again, not financial advice, but let's take a look at two day two scenarios. First scenario, reversing. When I reverse and I break down here or here, well, then I'm looking for reverse at a big resistance. First TP for me will be my very first support. So TP number one, that's going to be plan A for me. Let's take a look at plan B here. And plan A is playing out perfectly. Again, my plan A, my plan A it is not chasing after the uh, it's not chasing after the price. It is waiting for the price to get where I want it to be so I can cut it off guard. All right. Now it's my time to start hunting those beautiful whales, all right? It's not the whale's time to start swallowing me whole. It's time for me to take back control. And for that, I need a plan. And that's what we're doing, guys. We're acting as hunters. So, or fisherman's fishing for that kraken. So, let's take a look at that. Remember, we're against big money, guys, here. So, we need to act smart. We don't have that brute force, but we have this smartness on our side. Let's use it. Plan B. What would plan B be, guys? Give me the heads up on the head. What do you think plan B could be? To the moon. Yeah, could be. Let's analyze that, that possibility. To the moon. I don't think it's going to be to the moon because I have a predictive range up here. And also, after I break the premium and this golden bar, breakout. Yeah, also, I will be looking 
for a retest. So my retest will happen somewhere like that. I'll call this plan A plus because it's a continuation of not reversing. So keep going up. So plan B will be in case we reverse. In case we do reverse. So let me adjust this because this is going to be here. So we can understand a little bit better. In case we reversed, plan B, and let me add it here, will be, for B at least, it's going grabbing liquidity and doing a reanalysis. I know it looks like plan A, but that is in case it just flips right away, which right now we can see that plan B, B it is the le least possible one. Still, I got it in my back pocket. Just in case, remember, it's better be prepared than sorry. So BOS, what's that? Break of structure. Yes. Is that what you mentioned? BOS, break of stru uh, structure? Let me know. Yes, perfect. So if you like that, if you like that, we can turn it on in here. So BOS in a COC. Exactly. How to turn on premium? I don't get it, bro. Buddy. Well, the premium zones, I, I, I thought like premium membership, you are here because you have premium. All right, right, right. So they're a little bit lower there. But are, are you talking about, let, let's see. Are you talking about the uh, premium and discount zones? They're lower here. They're below the multi-time frame support resistance. Perfect. I just wasn't that sure if you were talking about those or the order blocks. Or also the, what is it, Delhi Creepy Zones. I just wasn't that sure. But great. Thanks for DJ DT. And shout out for you, brother. So let's wrap it up and go for the last one that I uh, got requested. It's already time to uh, wrap it up and say goodbye. So we might be able to catch one more. Almost one hour and a half. So on one hour and 20 minutes. So let's take a look at one more. And, be and before we go. So that was, we are link, soul. So let's do soul and we wrap it up for today. So Solana, nice, not market cap. I love the market cap and let's not use it anymore. It usually it's kind of like a confusing. Let's do this one. Solana, here we go. Is it market cap? No, use all advice, perfect. Let's just wait for our indicators to load. Let's turn everything off, but the very basics. Are we what? Let me know guys. El Toro Loco, what's up, brother? Bullish, yes. We are bullish. Perfect. Beautiful. Guys, you see how easy it becomes? I mean, uh, the TA is not that complex. The emotions and feelings, they get in the way, right? But so far, I think you guys are nailing it. I mean, going step by step, taking piece by piece, that make things much more easy. Just like that. Right. I mean, now you can turn around and tell your physics, uh, your physics teacher, hey, buddy, I told you I was good at it. It was you that sucked at explaining stuff, right? Yeah. Little bad joke for that. So if you like charts and bad jokes, this is the place to be. So we're bullish. So target price of total TP62. Are you already planning for that high of a, of a target? Let's see. So we're bullish. Look at our consolidation score very very high that means that we could be at the end of that ranging zone and we see it because we're pushing up here right so just like Piper mentioned the Sheldon Cooper effect that you keep knocking 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 and eventually uh you're gonna get that uh door answered or open for you so I would in fact I see a double bottom here double top oh yeah you oh you see a double top in here so what I see there let me scroll a little bit it back down and use a free tool which is the regression trend let me go all the way here because i see a, a higher energy level if i zoom out in here you'll see that we've been ranging energy level energy level energy level and that kind of like the same oh in fact i'll call this one single one so we've been ranging all the way here you see that? I mean, of course we are like analyzing here. Hey, what's up, Alpha? Shout out, shout out for you, brother. What's up? Yeah, bad jokes. And if we could have a measure in that, I'll be teaching that too also. <laughs> bad jokes and TA, perfect combination, guys. Anytime, brother, anytime. So let's 
see that what's happening on the macro structure, all right? Which is fine. You look at where I have my uh, my signal. See, oh, guys, making a newbie mistake here. Where am I at? 15, 15 minutes, all right? Let's go to the four hour. Did I saw it correctly? Yes. In fact, look at what am I seeing here. So this is way better. All right, let's do it from here to here. All right, I'm ranging. And if I go farther down, well, I want to skip, just so you know, just so you know, I'm trying to skip this fail hitting shoulders because, I mean, the target wasn't as I would expect it, despite it did play it out. It wasn't the real target, right? I mean, we got that dynamic reactor in the way. So, well, yeah, let's remove that. So I'll try to just not consider this part, not because it's not part of TA, but because I can live without that. So why? Because I'm getting very close at the top of that ranging or up ranging zone, right? Look at where is my alarm set already. I did not just made it. Remember, I already had those on place. Where is going to be my next alarm here? So why is that? Let's get started and look for those. So the first thing I'm going to do is support resistances. Do I have any support resistance? I'm in the middle of a big gap of support resistance. How can I fix that? Well, then if I want support resistance, well, let me turn off this ones. Let me add order blocks instead. But then talking about support and resistance, here is where I can take a look at my local medium or uh, again, or macro size and also how many support resistances. I want local chart and, uh, and do, I don't know, something like seven. I want to see where else do I have support and resistance. All right. Seems like I, I have a big gap in here, which is fine. So let me remove that noise going back to four or five. And remember, I have my order blocks. Order blocks are magnetic. Where do I have my next big order blocks? You see that? So right now, we're kind of like in the middle of the whole thing. So it's not time for me to take a decision. Although I have a blue dot in here, which is a big seeker, a bearish divergence. Yes, I'm above the zero line. But since I have both of those, I am looking for it maybe to break through that zero line. Not just there, not just yet. But if that do it slowly, I most likely I'm going to go hit this support zone and then do FOR of four in here and then jump back above. But, but when the price gets here, I will reanalyze my, uh, my entry. Does that make sense? Didn't the middle? Uh, does the indicators like uh, reactor, like reactor and oscillator, was it move considerably, or do they only move on your time frame? Oh, they move on my time frame. If I'm at the four hour, I'm seeing the movement of the calculation from the four hour. Does that answer your question? Although, although here's something. This is a pro tip again. Let me clear this up so I can remake my spaghetti. And by the way, by the way, I just realized. What does it say here, guys? Channel. Automated channel here. Courtesy of our triangle channels. Here we go. Channel. Small. And then our widgets. Wrap and triangle. So we can see that triangle playing out here. Again, we're at the top. Yes, we're making a moving here, but this is not looking good. Not till now. I need to wait for the FOR or the FOR. But... If I start seeing a big movement in here and a slow movement in here, my FOR is going to be here. If I see a slow movement in here and a big movement in here, my FOR is going to be here. Does that make sense? So they don't move along at the same speed. If that also answer your question, Le Undertaker. So Undertaker, does that answer your, your question? Let me know before we wrap things up. I'm bringing you, brother. So take your time. Okay, yeah. It's just to want to know if they move constantly. Oh, they do move constantly. I mean, remember, charts never sleep, especially in crypto. So they are chart per step. So one, one, sorry, one candle, one step. Guys, so it feels weird not to have Piper here. Let's go to the standalone section here. Hey, guys, thank you so much for joining today's class. Today, usually on Fridays, we go over our win rate. So 
It's been crazy. It's a couple crazy weeks. That's why we haven't been taking any trades because we just had a new release, right? These new indicators we have rebuilt and uh, we are better yet explaining how to use those indicators so we can start trading with the full power of chart and of course of confluence guys so from the next friday or to the next friday now we're going to be retaking that uh that uh calculation and seeing all the trades that we have taken throughout the week and updating our own win rate so guys for the veterans guys please let me know what is your current win rate so we can have a baseline of what we're looking here and guys for the new ones remember this is not magic this is not just a buy and sell indicator all right this win rate is achieved by using different method methods together of ta so let's see richie what's up brother not sure but i'm definitely back uh, over 85 look at that richie love it nice 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 Hey, hola, what's up? ¿Qué tal el gato? ¿Cuál es tu win rate? What's your win rate, brother? Also, for the veterans, do we have little fish in here? Do we have quills? Frank, what's your win rate, brother? Of the classes. Little fish, what's your win rate? Let me know, guys, before we wrap it up. Also, you have your win rate. Hey, look at that. Entre 70 y 85, between 70 and 85. Amazing. Great. My first few months uh, ruined my PNL before I jumped. I joined CP. Don't worry, brother. We spread the love here, and of course, we share the traits. So, little fish, brother, thank you for participating. Your win rate is 90 plus. Awesome and amazing. Guys, so this is what slowly but surely gets you, right? And this is not I just buy because it says buy. I don't sell just because it says sell. I show you how to combine all of the tools, make it your own, guys. And once you have grabbed the best of the best for you that works for you, you're going to be achieving a very neat win rate and, of course, going uh, in the right direction. So, guys, that depends on your hard works. So, I only, I'm only here showing and uh, telling you about my experience, my own journey through crypto, and it's time for you to build your own happy story. So, guys... Thank you so much for being on today's class. Hopefully you have a great weekend. I'm surely going to be sleeping a ton this weekend, a training a ton, of course. And as always, guys, thank you for watching and stay prime. See you guys tomorrow.